our church, it's a Baptist church, it's, uh, it's aimed at uh, uh, being a, a community of faith. As such, we come together and try and support each other, but also we're in, really interested in trying to meet the needs of the local community. And we sit in an area close to the centre of Sheffield, which is one of England's most deprived areas. Uh, so social economic deprivation are issues that we, we're aware of, we're, we're trying to understand those needs better and to try and meet those needs and to use our building uh, as a resource to meet those needs. So uh, all sorts of things like lunch clubs, we do that in partnership with outside volunteers as well as ourselves. And we might collaborate with other people to, to do community meals using surplus supermarket food. Some of our members go out and engage in partnership with, with other people, so a soup run, which is city centre churches working together for the homeless, or street pastors helping students on a Friday night or a Saturday night, <laughs> just being out there to help them with uh, their needs. So there's a mixture of, of activities inside the church run by volunteers, and often the activities are, are provided by outsiders, so choir groups will come in, and that sort of uh, opportunity for our spaces to be used is welcome. So the building, it was built originally as a church with a Sunday school below it, and then in the 1900s it was uh, extended to add more teaching spaces. So we've got a, quite an extensive set of rooms, which are really community rooms on the, on the ground floor, and our worship space is above. It's a listed building, so alterations have to take into account the history and the heritage of the place. When I retired, I found time to come to a church meeting. I discovered that the church was running a £20,000 deficit and I looked around and saw uh, lots of rooms which were underutilised. Uh, so that was a, an important milestone. We, we established a property group uh, which started off with the one person who'd been looking after the maintenance of the building uh, for a long time uh, and added to that all people who had sort of uh, exp expertise and uh, could help uh, and that property group has really been the uh, the vehicle for the, the church to think about not only repairing and improving the building but also how we could get it better used more extensively used we're, we're probably only using the building 20 percent of its capacity and we'd like to grow that the, the next step for us, really, was to, uh, to think about the needs of the area and that involved sort of visiting all sorts of different organisations, people like ourselves, other churches, to see what they were doing, what, what services they were providing, what were the gaps in the market. And we made connection with a few people who were doing interesting things and they, they ended up being advisors and sometimes they were so successful in what they were doing that they, they, they said, can we use our premises? So we, we, we started with St Mary's down the road as a partnership. They have something called Time Builders, which uh, people volunteer to, to provide activities. And we ended up hosting a food cycle community meal every Wednesday, which was a, a free community activity. So we prototyped all sorts of things like cafes. We, we started a cafe with MenCap for learning disabled people to develop employability skills. So partnering with, with those sort of organisations where we had premises that could help were important contributors to our thinking. We're still learning. Sometimes things don't always work. Uh, for example, MenCap couldn't attract the, the volume of trade because our entrances are so unattractive and, and uh, the building doesn't appear to be open for business. So our master plan is all about thinking how can we improve the entrance areas. To add to the, the internal volunteers, uh, we, we've obviously had to engage with professionals and uh, sometimes we've needed grant income to, to be able to pay their fees. So the National Churches Trust have provided us with an early development grant that could pay for a master plan for the building. But we were able to add to that with uh, fantastic offers from other professionals who, pro bono, free of charge, offered quantity surveying advice. Another fantastic resource has turned out to be students at our local university. So architecture students, interior design students, MBA students, uh, they've all made contributions. 
having the opportunity to be part of this personally is historical for me. Everything we've learned in class, to bring them to practice, we're bringing it right down here to make them useful for this church and for the community of Sheffield at large. Funding bodies have been so essential as well. So we've managed to re-roof the building with about 20 different grants, with a total of about 350,000. It's a large building, so we wouldn't get anywhere from within our own resources. So that's been so important. There are organisations in Sheffield that help people develop skills to write grant application funding. So SIFAB in, in Sheffield, South Yorkshire Funding Advice Bureau, uh, run training courses and that sort of thing. And the other thing, uh, other resource have, has been, um, again, research projects such as the Empowering Design Project, where a group of us went down to London and were trained for a couple of days. Uh, and so that's been an internal resource and, and that relationship has been so supportive over the, uh, the last five years or so. I think as a core um, activity for any group uh, that's going to try and uh, develop its building and its services to the community is to engage with that community, to listen, to research. Uh, there's published data that you can gain access to, health and well-being information. But talk to local councillors, find out what they understand to be the needs of the area. Carry on networking at every opportunity. Uh, open your building up for visitors. Get good at social marketing to, to, uh, to engage with people. And carry on talking to people. One-to-one -one conversations are often the best. And share your, share your story with other people. And find a point of connection. And I think that those are some of the key messages I would share anyway. <laughs>